The Maxi Yacht Rolex Cup, hosted by the Yacht Club Costa Smeralda. The event and venue may sound familiar, but for assembled owners and crews, the challenge is as fresh as ever. It never gets old. Every year we come back, we're surrounded by this magnificent fleet. Everybody realizes everybody else is coming. They want to go to the party too. Just take a look around here for a second. It's special. It's very special. The quality of the fleet is higher than ever. Whole generation, new generation, everybody wants to be in Porto Cervo during this event. A lot of friends, a lot of enemies. Bad. Let's go. Evolution and innovation have long been features of the Maxi Yacht Rolex Cup. As well as high-profile yachts making their competitive debuts, developments this year include a reclassification of the fleet based on IRC rating rather than hull length and the inclusion of a multi-hull class for the first time. Crediamo che le imbarcazioni multiscafo siano parte dell'evoluzione del mondo della vela e crediamo anche che saranno parte della Maxi anche in futuro. Per tutti noi qua lo Yacht Club Costa Smeralda è una grande soddisfazione vedere nei moli qua a Porto Cervo questa tipologia di flotta. È una grande soddisfazione, vuol dire che il nostro lavoro è apprezzato, vuol dire che quello che trovano a Porto Cervo probabilmente non lo trovano in altre realtà del mondo. With 45 maxis of varying lengths arranged in six classes in attendance, establishing and maintaining a level playing field for all competitors is a major undertaking. So, my name is James Dad. I'm the technical officer for the International Maxi Association. I look after all matters to do with ratings, class splits, and trying to make sure that uh, the events run as smoothly as possible. We have a team of seven measurers, uh, which is our largest team that we have at any event during the year taking a mainsail off of the boom for one of these boats and putting it on a table isn't an option. So we spend a lot of our time in the build-up getting those things checked. And then all we do when we're here is make sure they're the same ones as we, we checked before the event. Uh, so I just want to check the intersection of the force day and the mast and then the force day level. Okay, so do you want to go up or do you stay down here? I'll stay down here. The J-Class rules are actually very strict and uh, they, they outline all the parameters in the way the boats can sail. So you're... These checks in some way might come across as being an extra chore. However, they are actually really important to make sure that everyone is abiding by the rules, everyone's in measurement. OK, let's go and do that one more time. Hello. Safety and, uh, and writing check, yes. On you, right. Let's go. Uh, bon. One of the key things that what we do is having a visibility on the dock. It calms a lot of the competitors when they see that we are checking on them. How many spinnaker maximum will you have on board while racing? Three. Okay, good. Good answer. <laughs> they like to see that we're looking at them as well as their competitors. They actually sometimes get in a bit of a panic if we're not around. Every morning before the guys go out sailing, we will be down on the docks observing what's going on and making sure that they observe us observing what's going on. We'll check then later. On offer to crews coming to Porto Cervo is a varied and demanding schedule of daily competition, embracing both windward leeward races for some classes and the array of spectacular coastal courses in and around the magical La Maddalena archipelago sailed by the others. A combination of climate, camaraderie and contest unrivaled in world sailing. Racing starts in a fresh northerly 10-knot breeze, building to 20, with the fleet split between windward leeward and coastal courses. In the tight three-way J-Class contest, Svea begins her campaign as she means to go on, winning both windward leeward races thanks to strong starts, tactical nous and crew cohesion. Coastal courses, Peter Harburg's Blackjack is prominent on the water in Maxi A. But it's Leopard 3 that wins by just over a minute from Galatea on Handicap. In the five boat Super Maxi class, the stunning new 101 foot Y3K marks her competitive debut with a win, some 15% lighter and with 15% more draft and sail area than her predecessor. 
with the new Y3K, the owner, Klaus Peter Offen, was really looking for a, a replacement for his 100 footer, which has been racing for the last 15 years. Nice pressure here. His idea was that uh, he wanted a boat which was both better cruising and also better for racing. And I think he's achieved that even on his first outing. We had some, uh, let's say, usual children sicknesses when some baby is born or whatever, a new boat. By now, I would say, yes, we are there where we want to be technically. Otherwise, the boat is fantastic. Yes, I'm very happy. We like the boat. The following day, though, it's one ball Swan 115 moat that prevails among the Super Maxis, leaving her tied with Y3K and Inui at the top of the class. 20 knot northerlies are again the order of the day. But outside La Madalena Archipelago, a heavy sea state widely described as lumpy makes for some spectacular conditions. Maxi A is won by Pierluigi Loropiana's My Song. Last year's debutante, now sailing with a lighter bulb and a crew of 24. In the J class, Topaz retires after shredding two spinnakers. Yeah, but I'm on the loft. Yako. Yako. Yeah. Svea wins the ensuing match race with Elshida to maintain her unbeaten record. There are breakages too in Maxi B, where both North Star and Cannonball sustain damage. Hat Fout's crew on Bellamente and the Proteus team of George Sakalaris take up the challenge, with the issue settled by just 19 seconds in favour of Proteus after a coastal race lasting over 46 nautical miles. Today, Portachervo just turned it on unbelievably. Sun, big wave, big breeze. Just one of those very special Porta Turbo days. I think we actually ended up losing on corrected time, but we won on the water and it was just the most amazing sailing. We had three boats within a couple of lengths doing 20 plus knots down through Bomb Alley. Just doesn't get any better than that. Proteus now lead Maxi B, thanks at least in part to the contribution of relief helm Christina Sacalaris, a laser sailor and George's daughter, who steered the crew to victory in the second Windward Lured race the previous day. Yeah, I'm super happy that I was able to help out the team by driving well, but there are a lot of roles on the team that go into having a really good day, and driving is just one other part of that. The team also performed incredibly well. One minute, 20. Just picking up a little bit of speed. Here we go. Typically, I sail the Ilka 6, which is the women's single-handed boat for the Paris 2024 Games. I'm trying to qualify for that. So the adjustment to coming to Proteus and driving is pretty significant. The boat builds speed in totally different ways. Uh, starting is very different. And you play just a small role on the team. So uh, I'm not actually calling the shots. 3% faster and the 3% slower than I think the team was very excited with uh, Christina's performance. Because sometimes, it, as we get older, uh, we, we get our old habits, but the young generation, they, they bring new ideas, new, uh, and they learn faster than, than us. So she adapted very, very well. The two of them, you know, they are very competitive, each of them. Very careful, lucky. Ah, oh, come on. You know, on a, and surrounding. Yeah, yeah. So they have their little thing that they do on the boat, which is uh, really cool to experience. And uh, I don't think for George, he could be happier. We're both very analytical people. So we like to watch and ask a lot of questions and truly understand things before we jump into doing it. She's a perfectionist, and that's what I love about her. And there's no better feeling than having a member of your family be on the same boat. You know, my wife likes the sport a lot too, 
but uh, Christina being able to work together, it's, uh, it's even more fun. Day three, two entries are defending perfect score lines and both finish with their winning records intact. Svea still unstoppable in the J-Class and Jean-Pierre Barjon's 65-foot Spirit of Lorena sweeping all before them in Maxi C, including the 78-foot perennial class winner H2O. It's altogether tighter in Maxi B, where Bellamente's win on the shorter coastal course now sees them draw level with Proteus at the top of the eight-boat class. Two boats notch their first wins of the regatta. Andrea Recordati's crew on the refitted bullet in Maxi A, and in the multi-hull class, the brand new Gunboat 80, Highland Fling 18. Her owner's vaunted competitive instincts, very much in evidence, are now being channeled in a new direction. You don't race any less hard just because it's a multi-hull. If anything, actually, it's more difficult to help. Burning Jake Long. Here we go. I'm not getting any younger. And running from side to side on a big boat, sitting on the rail when you have got your 10 minutes off, is becoming harder. Come on, Bell, coming down. I wanted to build a boat that would allow me to continue racing for many years more. Now we're cooking. All right. Despite the forced withdrawals of two entries, the three-boat multi-hull class, including Gunboat 68 Convexity 2, has still been turning heads and on waters traditionally the preserve of monohull maxis. There were two different philosophies, but they are matching again together now. And the pleasure of having nice toys under your boots. Technology is here also to have boats which are super light, because that's the purpose of a multi-hull. There is no keel, there is no weight under, just the width, which is making the stability, but you have to be careful because those boats, you have to pilot them. That's very good, like that. And that's a pleasure, yes, finally, to be accepted in the little village, which was quite closed till today. Like Convexity 2, the 80-foot Highland Fling 18 was built by Gunboat based on naval architecture from French design studio VPLP, whose simulations highlight the differences in performance between the current racing version and a shadowing cruising version expected next year. So far, it's Adrian Keller's Allegro that has found the right balance and leads the class, but both debutants lining up alongside her have made fast starts to their racing careers. This is our first time ever racing the boat, so it's a really good shakedown regatta for us. We're obviously right in there. Allegra seems to have a little edge, but we're just here to do the best we can and have fun. For Maxi Yacht Rolex Cup sailors, the waters off the Costa Smeralda are an annual attraction. For scientists at the One Ocean Foundation, aiming to secure special protection for the nearby canyon of Caprera and its abundant marine life, they're of interest all year round. The canyon of Caprera really represents a very rich spot in the Mediterranean on biodiversity. All our scientific research has found seven out of the eight marine mammal species that are found in the Mediterranean. So it's really important that this is protected because also they use it as breeding grounds. What makes the canyon so important are the underwater currents flowing against its walls, which force waters rich in nutrients from the seabed to the surface, enabling the growth of algae and plankton at the base of the food chain. This in turn attracts an unusually high proportion of the marine mammals at the top, including whales, dolphins, seals and rays. To secure the evidence they need, the One Ocean Foundation returns each month to collect water samples. Water is coming. Okay, just let me check. The filters from the samples are then analyzed for environmental DNA to establish which mammals have been present in the water. And in so doing, provides scientific proof of the need for greater protection of the canyon and its waters. eDNA, or environmental DNA, is DNA shed into the environment from animals that can come from skin cells, mucus, and be collected on something as simple as a filter. 
Once the filters return to the lab, uh, there'll be three stages within that process before we've got data. They'll be extracted, where we'll purify DNA from the sample. They'll be amplified so that we have enough copies of the targets that we're interested in for analysis. And then sequenced to determine the composition of the DNA and allows us to compare this to reference databases and see which mammals were present. As a research tool, eDNA is incredibly useful because it allows us to census an area in a non-invasive way without the animals needing to be present at that point. Thanks to the body of evidence being collected every month by the One Ocean Foundation, there's a real prospect of the canyon receiving important marine mammal area designation, a crucial step towards securing its long-term protection. That's really what our research is about because we've been doing this now for the past five years to really make sure that all this research is being collected on all the different aspects, on the richness of biodiversity, on the presence of the marine mammals. It's really scientific proof. After three excellent days sailing, breeze on the 4th is in short supply, averaging less than six knots. In the only race possible on the windward lured course, Bellamente claims an important win to take a three-point lead in Maxi B. On the same course in Maxi A, there's a second win for Bullet that earns her a share of second place with Leopard 3 and Mysong, still eight points adrift of the consistent and class-leading Galatea. And Spirit of Larina's winning run finally comes to an end in Maxi C, beaten by the new Baltic 68 cafe racer Open Season, owned by Thomas Bescher, a stunning example of the design innovation on show at this year's event. Another yacht making her competitive debut, Open Season is almost entirely electrically operated, providing one of several welcome advantages for her owner. Biggest asset for the boat for me is the total absence of noise. Like in your old wooden dinghy when you were a child. The deck is marine cork. It's lighter than teak. The boats are nowadays so light and well developed that you don't need a bigger boat for having a sensational sailing experience. This is 68 foot and it sails faster than my 90 footer did in 2008 to 14 when I had it. The source of power in open season is electricity. The engine is electric, the boat trussler is electric, all winches are electric and you store the power in lithium batteries. So I would call this the brain of the boat, it's the PLC, and that's how uh, we manage our batteries. We can see that uh, how much the solar panels are charging. We more or less, in a sailing day, use only a 10% of the batteries with all the winches and everything's moving, so it's, it's quite nice. Something I love is uh, when we are sailing and we are not using the engine, the propeller can move as a nitro generator and we can recharge our batteries very fast. Full speed builds out, just racing here, guys. In addition, the new open season sustainability embraces both power and people. We use a lot less people on open season. On the old boat, which was a 32 meter race boat, we used 32, 33 people. On this boat, we are running with 16. That's half. It's certainly the step forward in sailing and sailing big boats generally because the sustainability and the lack of noise is unmatched. When old rivalries resurface, and with reputations on the line, some crew members switch from sailing to cycling as a way to unwind. Among them, Deep Blue's John O'Swain, a bike rider to his toe straps. To get away from the stress of the racing, I like to ride my bike. There's a group of us that travel with our bikes. It strengthens your lower body and the boat's always moving around, heeling over. So you do use a lot of your leg strength sailing. I've been coming to Porto Turbo for more than 20 years. 
the sheer beauty of it around here. I mean, the rock formations, you know, sailing around La Maddalena. It's one of the nicer venues in the world to come and race in. Some days you have long days. I mean, I think back to a couple of days ago in this regatta, I think we sailed a 55, almost 60 mile course. But at the end of the day, that's why we came here. We came here to race. As long as you can go back to your crew house that evening and have a nice dinner and sit there and talk about it, yeah, you're ready to go the next day. It never gets old. After the race schedule is shortened on day four for lack of breeze, racing starts on the final day in similar conditions in the hope that it might return. It does not. Our competitors, all the action, our competitors, this is the race committee. We will be abandoning racing for the day. Sorry we couldn't get one in for you today. I we'll look forward to seeing everyone at the awards ceremony. Race committee standing by, so. The announcement seals victory for Bellamente and Maxi B, following their week-long battle with George Sakalaris's Proteus, the first win in Porto Cervo for Hap Fouth and his team since 2016. You know, I'm an old man, and the boat compensated for my age. <laughs> it's always hardest when you feel like you didn't have any, you know, unforced errors, but we can still be really happy that we sailed really clean and really well, and there's always next time. <laughs> It's also been a two-horse race in the Super Maxi class, where Klaus Peter Offen's Y3K prevails in her first ever event by a single point over Moat, owned by Juan Baal. Maxi A, by contrast, sees a comfortable win for Galatea owners Chris Flowers and David Lucian. Wonderful competitors, wonderful fleet, wonderful setting, fantastic to be here. Also dominant, Svea, whose flawless performance earns them the J-Class honors while Allegra's strong start sees off Highland Fling 18 and Convexity 2 in the race for the first ever Maxi Multi-Hull title. Jean-Pierre Barjon's delight at winning Maxi C with his Spirit of Lorena crew is obvious. So, a successful first regatta for the new Y3K, raucously celebrated by her crew at the prize giving on a sunlit Piazza Azzurra. Likewise, Svea's win for owners Niklas Zemstrom and Philip Engelbert in the J-Class. And Hatfeld's team on Bellamente, returning to winning ways at their fourth attempt after another memorable week in Porto Cervo. Next time on Spirit of Yachting, we return to Italy and Taranto for the latest round of Sail GP.